the news finds you. All stations can keep up. At Adaba FM, we not only give you news at the speed of nanosecond, but we also break it down with up-to-date analysis, informed opinions, and distinct professionalism. That's why you love us. Adaba 88.9 FM, your go-to station. It's 12 o'clock. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Akinton there with Global News. In the news. Finally. U.S. returns precious capture to Nigerian government. Russia threatens the ten suspects in connection to Saturday's explosion. Floods and landslides causing havoc in Nepal. This is the news. The Academic Staff Union of Universities is still awaiting the decision of President Muhammad Buhari. On the no walk, no pay rule involved by the federal government since each strike began eight months ago. It was learned that the president's decision on the matter is key to a decision the union will take on whether to call off the strike or continue. It was for the length that only the president can grant the waiver for the arrears of the striking lecturers to be paid. Meanwhile, branches of ASU will begin consultations and later today over the possibility of calling off the strike. It was gathered at the union's National Executive Council will meet on the matter on Thursday. A bronze sculpture of a West African king that was in the collection of a Rhode Island museum for more than 70 years is among 31 culturally precious objects that have been returned to the Nigerian government. The sculpture, called the Head of a King or Oba, which was held at the Rhode Island School of Design Museum, was among the objects transferred to the Nigerian National Collections during a ceremony at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. The Benet Bronzes were stolen in 1897 when British colonial forces ransacked and looted the Kingdom of Benin, which is now the modern day Nigeria. Russia says it has detained eight people in connection with Saturday's explosion on a key bridge linking Russia to Crimea. Its security services said five of those held were Russians, while the others were Ukrainian and Armenian. The security has accused the Ukrainian security services of being behind the attack on the bridge. The news came as explosions were reported in the Ukrainian cities of Kherson, Zaporizhia, and Nikopol. It was reported that Kiev's five explosions had been had in Kursin, one of the largest cities under Russian occupation, where there were unconfirmed reports that the air defense system in the city had been activated. It said it was not clear what had triggered the explosions. The blast on the Crimea bridge was a powerful symbolic blow to the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who opened the bridge in 2018, four years after Russia's annexation of Crimea. President Putin called it an act of terrorism, saying Ukraine's intelligence forces had aimed to destroy the critically important piece of Russia's civil infrastructure. Elon Musk, as the night reports, he spoke to Vladimir Putin before posting a Twitter poll with his suggestions for ending Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I am Bremer, head of Russia Group political risk consultants he alleged that mr musk had personally told him about the conversation with mr putin but mr musk has now refuted this the suggestions included a proposal to hold votes in part of ukraine occupied by russia that a kremlin says it has annexed his comments were welcomed by moscow putin has already declared four ukrainian regions to be part of russia following so-called referendums Denounced as fraudulent by Kiev and its Western allies, Russia does not fully control any of the four regions. Glad to know you're still there for news updates and live streaming. Visit our website www.adabai.fm or download Adabai FM app on Google Play Store. You can be part of us on our social media platforms www.facebook.com slash 
89 on Facebook, at the by 89 FM on Instagram, and at the FM TV on YouTube. To provide us information via email newsroom at the FM. At least 33 people have died in floods and landslides across western Nepal in the past week. The worst of the monsoon rains eat Kanali province in the northwest where thousands of residents were evacuated. Officials say the hundreds of homes have been damaged in the avalanches and flooding. At least 22 people are still missing across the province and scores more have injuries. Rescuers have described difficulties in getting to the mountainous region amid continuing rain. Meanwhile, the UN's humanitarian agency said they were distributing food and medicine to the worst affected communities in western Nepal. Nepal is nearing the end of its monsoon season, which typically begins in June and ends in October. At least 110 people have died this year in rain-related disasters, according to the National Emergency Operations Centre. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has said his government would continue and consider providing military training to Ukrainian forces in their war with Russia. The Prime Minister told Australian media that he had spoken to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and teased about what further contributions Australia could make to Ukraine's war effort. Abanese told reporters that the government is considering training Ukrainian military personnel, describing Russia's targeting of civilians as appalling attacks. Reports differed on where that training might be provided, with some news organizations saying Australian trainers will be sent to Ukraine, while other reports said the training would not take place inside Ukrainian territory. And Indian authorities have altered production of cough syrup at a factory of made-in pharmaceuticals, a state minister said, after World Health Organization WHO reports said the medicine may be linked to the deaths of dozens of children in the Gambia. The health minister in Ayana state, Anil Vij, on Wednesday said authorities inspected a made-in factory near the town of Sanipat in the state and found 12 violators of good practices production was ordered to stop. Iraq's parliament speaker, President Mohammed al Abusi, said parliament will meet on Thursday to elect a new president in a surprise move seen as an attempt to end months of political deadlock. Iraq has already made three failed attempts this year to elect a new head of state from February 7 to March 30. Al Abbasi's office said on Tuesday more than a year since the last general election that the parliamentary session will have a single item on the agenda, the election of the president of the republic. Iraqis last voted on October 10, 2021 in a general election held due to a wave of mass protests against corruption, rampant unemployment and decaying infrastructure. Populist Shia Muslim leader Muqtada Al-Sada emerged as the biggest winner but failed to rally enough support to form a government. To end Global News, a recap of our top stories. A bronze sculpture of a West African king that was in the collection of a Rhode Island museum for more than 70 years is among 31 culturally precious objects that have been returned to the Nigerian government. Russia says it has detained eight people in connection with Saturday's explosion on a key bridge linking Russia to Crimea. Its security service said five of those held were Russians, while the others were Ukrainians and Armenians. At least 33 people have died in floods and landslides across western Nepal in the past week. That's Global News Editor Patience Ibe. I'm Michael Akintoli. Good afternoon.